Hello, church. This is Pastor Marianne, and I'm at St. Luke in Gilbertsville, and I'm here Hello. with... Pastor Scott from New Hanover, also in Gilbertsville. Hello, everybody. And today, we are going to talk about picking our nose. No, just kidding. <laughs> we are... <laughs> we were joking about that earlier. We are going to talk about the Gospel of Mark. Don't worry, not the whole thing. Not even a whole chapter. But we're going to be in Mark chapter 10 and verses 46 through 52. So we hope that you have Bibles you can open and join us as we read. Sounds good. Are you ready, ready. Pastor Scott? I'm ready. Okay, we're both ready. Here we go. And they came to Jericho. As he and his disciples and a large crowd were leaving Jericho, Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus, a blind beggar, was sitting by the roadside. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many sternly ordered him to be quiet. But he cried out even more loudly, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stood still and said, Call him here. And they called the blind man, saying to him, Take heart, get up. He is calling you. So throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. Then Jesus said to him, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, My teacher, let me see again. Jesus said to him, go, your faith has made you well. Immediately, he regained his sight and followed him on his way. Here ends the reading. Mm. <laughs> this is a good thanks be to God, praise be to God moment. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. All about calling and being on his way, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I didn't pick up on it until you just read um, that it says, my teacher, let me see again. Mm -hmm. That again is something that I just has gone right over my head, I think. Yeah. Yeah. And and it brings context in that, that this person wasn't always blind, correct? Right. You know, and, and uh, I think in some of the commentaries this week and reading it it said that this person has been marginalized they couldn't be married in the culture and all that and i know you were going to speak about so i won't go into that but i before i saw that this time i always just assumed it was from birth but here we have again right let me see again so what happened to bartimaeus yeah and it and he's the son of somebody it, it gives him, it gives him um, character. It gives him notoriety. It's yes. one of the few times in a Bible where you have this word son of, so it's meaningful. And it is meaningful. And it's, I think it's interesting that the writer of Mark um, chose to include that Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus, but then also that Bartimaeus says, Jesus, son of David. Yeah. So not only do we get the lineage of Bartimaeus, we get the lineage of Jesus. And he's the first one that proclaims it. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so we get this royalty of Jesus right here. Right. And there's no there's no facial recognition here. And I'm not trying to be right. cad and I'm not trying to be unkind, but he cannot see Jesus. And he's far enough away, he cannot touch his face. So who would know what a son of David looked like? You know, and so... It is not so much by his sight, but it's either by a story here is in faith and or what Jesus says. So, right. Right. Powerful. It is. It is. And Jesus doesn't touch him to heal him. He doesn't spit on him. No, no, not like the last back in chapter right. eight. Yeah. It's, right. <laughs> there's no hands, there's no spit, there's no mud. <laughs> right. Right. No calling up to heaven. Um, it's just your faith has made you well. Yeah. Yeah. But I think that can also be problematic if we take that too far. Yeah. 
you know, we have a lot of folks in our congregations and in our families and in our lives who truly believe that if they just pray hard enough, that themselves or their loved one will be cured of a deadly disease. Um, I always think about that too, in the context of, um, and third world countries and other places that are very poor, but yet very faithful and mm -hmm. have given their all. Um, we have these other ministries and churches that proclaim that you'll be blessed if only you have faith. And, and so what does that do for people that have very faithful and give it all and yet still remain in squalor and pain and um, no hope of, you know, inheriting anything but the kingdom of God ever in their lifetime? Right. Right. And I think that's a, that's a good place to transition the story is that it's not just, um, as I read in a commentary this week, it's <laughs> not just a healing story, which I've only ever thought of this as a healing story, but it's also a call story. Yeah. And this is Jesus taking Bartimaeus as someone on the margins, someone on the outskirts, not just of society, but of Jesus' ministry. Yeah. And go, your faith has made you well. And where Bartimaeus is going is following Jesus. Right. So he becomes a follower. Hmm. And I think a call story to us all in some regards is that when this, uh, when he says, my teacher, let me see again. I wonder after COVID if we're not all asking that um, in some regards rhetorically with a, with um, that will we talk about churches in general. Many churches didn't survive COVID. Many churches are wondering what they're going to do now that there's a severely reduced membership that comes inside to worship when everything used to be surrounding around in-person worship being the main focus of all these churches. And, and that's been now very much less than um, during COVID and this pandemic. And quite frankly, we, we talk about, we talk to people about other social functions, like either I was talking to people about recovery groups, recovery groups are down. Not that there's less people in recovery <laughs> right. or needing recovery, but there's just the fact that it was shut down for so long and Zoom and that, and just like worship services. And uh, you take a look at all social organizations and yeah. they're all take, took a huge hit. So as once when they define themselves as we call it the butts in the pew, there aren't as many butts in the pew anymore. And so um, how do we define our churches again? Dear, dear God, Jesus, let us see again. What is the new journey? And that's interesting to think about coming up on Reformation Sunday. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, you know, we we think about Reformation as not something that just happened 500 years ago, but right. something that happens again and again. Right. And recently the word metanoia has come back in fashion for Lutherans, um, which I believe is you could also say it's a new way of seeing a change of mind. Yeah. Um, so I'm just going to preach on this next Sunday too. And it will. <laughs> well, you could, you know, you could throw off your cloak, you know, you know, and just like, you know, Bartimaeus said, uh, you know, very, it's very symbolic, you know, and, and yeah. uh, again, I read up in there and then, you know, about, and you think about it, how symbolic that cloak was. So what are our idols or our cloaks that we are willing to throw off so that we can survive after COVID? How can the church survive? And it's not that the church of God or, or church of Christ will survive. That's a given. It's yes. what we have called the church, the institution, you yep. know, and what we have done. What are we willing to discard yep. to follow Jesus? Because Bar made it. Bartimaeus discarded everything. Right. Yeah. That's what he had. <laughs> that was his protection. That was his heat. Yeah. That was everything. Yeah. 
Those are tough questions. Tough questions. Maybe we'll answer them next week during our discussion on Reformation. Or maybe, you know, a month or so after. I, I don't know. Yeah, whenever God leads us to it. <laughs> right. Right. Oh, well, thank you, Pastor Scott. It's been a joy. Thank you, Pastor Marianne. Thank As always, we come away with more questions than answers. Yes. But I think that's the way it should be. Yeah, for sure. So that will leave everybody for next week. Something to come back and and uh, and join us again and send us your comments and and please share. Until to next week, I just wish all our friends um, have a great week. Look forward to it and uh, uh, throw off those cloaks. Get ready to follow Jesus. Amen. Amen. Peace be with you, dear church. Peace.